Hello there, it's that time of the week where we jump right into exploring this week's new developments in World of Warcraft. It's actually been a pretty quiet week for the live game as the wait for the mysterious pirate chicken drumsticks patch continues amid much teasing from the WoW development team. That doesn't mean it was quite everywhere though, as we got a big info dump for Classic Season of Discoveries Phase 2, and also some pretty big news for Blizzard. On Monday, Blizzard announced that their new president is Johanna Faris. Johanna was most recently the GM of Call of Duty, having previously led up COD's eSport efforts. Pre-Activision Blizzard, she'd spent around 12 years with the US National Football League, working in marketing and business development. Johanna shared her first message to the Blizzard staff publicly via Twitter and expressed an understanding of the differences between Cause and Blizzard's products and a desire to listen and to work with the Blizzard staff. It's going to be some time before we see the full impact of the changes at Blizzard. Some folks have pointed out that this will be the first time Blizzard has been led by someone who hasn't worked within Blizzard previously, so this will definitely be a big change, but there's no doubt in the immediate short term, given the recent events, she faces quite a bit of a challenge when it comes to getting the surviving teams within Blizzard back onto a stable footing, something that I definitely wish her well in. On the game front, the biggest news this week was the announcement of more details for the second phase of Classic Season of Discovery, which will be launching on February the 8th. Quite a few of the details were already in the public domain, for example the main raid is going to be a 10 man version of Nomnagon and the level cap is rising to level 40, but there's plenty of new info as well. The new raid was going to consist of 6 bosses with redesigns of the original 5 dungeon bosses and a brand new boss. Blizzard are also planning to change up the raid lockouts for launch. The team have decided to continue having the rage available from launch so that the world first race still includes levelling and gearing, but to reduce the feeling of falling behind for other players who can't put quite as much time into the game, the team have decided to switch to weekly lockouts for the first two weeks, after which it will go back to the three day lockout we saw for BFD in phase one. The raid's also going to have a bunch of new item drops, many of which offer nods to the original old school dungeon rewards. The team are also adding a bunch of new skill books which will be teaching new abilities without taking up a rune slot from the dungeon drops as well as a raft of rune updates. PvP players get a new event, the Blood Moon which is based in Stranglethorn Vale. This will run on a fixed 3 hour cycle and last about 30 minutes. The phase 1 event is also going to switch to a 3 hour cycle to make it easier to do when there's less folks about. The start time for that event will be 1 hour later than the Stranglethorn event so that there's no competition between those two events. Professions see their skill caps being raised to 225 with a bunch of new recipes and materials. Blizzard have also confirmed that they plan to make a revamp of specialisations for phase 3 and that unfortunately means that we're not going to see the introduction of specialisations in Phase 2. Something that's become a bit of a staple in Classic, especially in Wrath, is GDKP runs. And Blizzard have announced that they plan to ban these in SOD Phase 2. For those who don't know what GDKP is, item drops are basically auctioned for gold to the highest bidder, with the gold then being distributed across the entire raid group. Blizzard haven't shared a lot of details about how they'll implement the plan, apart from stating that they have multiple ways of detecting this, but my own view is if it's simply a terms of service policy, I'm not sure how successful this will be. We've, we saw for example that the retail ban and boosting communities just kind of pushed them out of the game and a little bit underground, but had very little actual impact on the industrial scale selling of boosts that we see in retail, and so much so to the extent that they ended up having to add a special channel for them. If Blizzard are planning to be a little stricter in this, I think it will be super useful and perhaps it might be a hint of things that we might see to come elsewhere in Classic, but also in retail in due course so yeah i think that's something we'll be wanting to keep an eye on on the subject of enforcement the team also announced that they're planning to roll out some new technology to combat botting 
Now, what was interesting to me as a more of a retail player is that they mentioned that this tech has been tested in both classic and retail. So I suspect it's something we'll also hopefully see being rolled out to retail as well in due course, perhaps with the next patch. Now, the team were very careful to emphasize that dealing with bots is always a bit of an arms war with the botters always finding new ways to counteract anything Blizzard does to try and stamp them out. So they did avoid trying to promise too much, but they did hint that their tests have yielded results. And the fact that they were even willing, I think, to announce that they're doing this is quite telling for me. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this might be something that's a little bit more impactful than what we've seen in the past. But I guess, yeah, time will tell. There's no word on the timing of the rollout for retail. But if it needs a new patch, I, I'm guessing that it'll probably be something that we'll see turn up in 10.26. Now, over in Classic Hardcore, the PTR now includes a self-found mode. Now, if you're not familiar with what self-found is, this option basically disabled trading, mail, and the auction house. The idea is that basically you just have to make do with whatever gear drops for you as you're leveling up. This mode can be turned off by speaking to either Watcher Ferro in Ironforge's Hall of Explorers or Watcher Morta in Undercity's Apothecarium. Turning off the mode is permanent for that character. The only way you can enter self pound mode is at the point of creating a new character. Over in retail, Blizzard have confirmed that they have no plans to add unobtainable rewards that were skill based into the trading post. This announcement was in response to some data mining that found that the Siege of Ogrimmar curve mount had had some traders 10 days value attached to it. This value was very high and honestly quite odd. So in my view, it had always been unlikely that it was going to appear in the trading post, but it was something that triggered a lot of discussion both for and against uh, in the community. So it it was obviously quite an interesting debate to watch, but Blizzard's announcement obviously kind of headed that off. Now, their announcement did only apply specifically to the trading post. They haven't actually ruled out these mounts coming back in some other form. So I suspect the debates and the rights and wrongs of FOMO mounts and whether they should return is something that's going to likely continue. And I have a suspicion it's something that the Blizzard devs have been watching very carefully just to try and get a feel for community sentiment. So yeah, I think this is an area that we'll want to, again, keep an eye on in future. On the subject to the trading post, Thursday brought the launch of the February lineup. To celebrate the one year anniversary of the post, Blizzard included two items at bargain prices. A toy that turns us into a mannequin for 10 tendies and the former recruit a friend mount, the X-53 Touring Rocket for 100 tendies. The Friendship Fox, which had been data mined and speculated as being the monthly reward this month, actually ended up being 750 tendies. The monthly reward is instead the awesome Love Witch's attire. Blizzard also announced that filling the Traveler's Log this month will award a bonus 500 tendies, so that's 1,000 in total, and along with the usual monthly bonus, 1,500. Hopefully this is something we'll see more of in the future. I think as players we've all been feeling the increasing cost of items on the post and having access to more attendees is definitely very welcome and, and obviously something that the dev team had promised that they would look at. This week also has a pretty packed ca event calendar with both the Luna Festival starting today and the Love is in the Air holiday starting on Monday. Now this video was recorded before the start of the Luna Festival event so I don't just now have confirmation for anything new in the event but a new Dragon Riding armor cap has been data mined. This event involves a bit of a world tour around the vanilla, wrath, kata and dragonflight zones but with the addition of Dragon Riding, this year I suspect it's going to be a lot faster to complete. I'm actually looking forward to redoing it on my Dragon Riding mounts just to see how it feels. I still have quite a fair few toys to collect from the event, so, and that's along with the skin. So yeah, that's definitely something I'll be wanting to drop by this year. Love is in the air also gets some love this year. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. 
With a new mount, the Heartseeker Mana Ray for 270 love tokens. You can farm the tokens from the event's dailies as well as from the Crown Chemical Dungeon event which also awards the awesome X45 Heartbreaker mount which has, happens to be one of the rarer mounts in game. Personally, I make do with a single run each day of that dungeon, so my chances of getting them out probably aren't great, but I'm holding out hope regardless. I did, after all, get the Headless Horseman mount that way. There's also a data mined armor set for dragon riding mounts, and on Wednesday, one of Blizzard's artists shared some tent models that they'd created. Now, there's no context of these. I'd love for them to be usable toys, but I think there's probably a decent chance that they're props. I'm wondering, maybe for a new area? Either way, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's been added for this event this year. Blizzard did announce that there was a little bit of a small revamp to it, so yeah, we'll just have to see. Both of these events are part of the What a Long Strange Trip It's Been achievement, which rewards the Violet Protodeck for participating in all of the big holiday events across the year. If you haven't got that mount again, I, I did it last year, and I actually had quite a bit of fun doing it, although it is a bit of a commitment, because you do have to kind of commit to logging into the game within eight different very specific time frames, but yeah, it, it is worth considering if you haven't got the mount. I'll add some links for more info for these events in a pinned comment once the events go live and we know a bit more about them. Well, that's all the news from Azeroth for this week. But what about you? Are you looking forward to more SOD content or just farming those new mounts from the holiday events? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to keep up with all the news from Azeroth, I do these videos every week along with plenty of other guide and opinion videos. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification icon so that you get notified whenever a new one goes live. And if you've enjoyed this week's news, do let both me and the YouTube know by hitting the like icon. Thanks for watching and I will see you all again soon.